Hey there guys, Erica here from High 49 rc This is the first video that I have properly filmed in the last six months, so I'm kind of nervous, so bear with me. But anyway, today I want to try and tackle a problem with these Yoda 2 axles. The, the issue is that I'm sure many of you have run across with axles that use knuckle bushings is that if you use Loctite, the screw gets stuck in the knuckle bushing, and then when you try and bring it out, it pulls the bushing with it, and either stretches out your knuckle or it pushes the threads out of the C-hub, which is what happened on these axles. The thing is with these though, is that the C-hub is one piece with the axle housing. So to fix that, you need to get a whole new axle housing. And at the time when I drew up the plans to make the new bushings that we're gonna make today, they did not have any in stock. That's why I went with the new bushing idea. So a handful of the holes on these two axles are currently all stripped out which is a big bummer. So what we're gonna do to fix that is we're going to oversize the bolts up to M4 screws and we're going to make some new bushings out of this 5 16 brass round bar. I got some DA200 collets and collet chucks to help us with this project um, to assist in the drilling because space is a premium on Rambi, my turret lathe. So having a real short tool length is really important. Let's take a closer look at this problematic design and how we're gonna fix it today. So as you can see, the C-hub is part of the axle housing and thus if you stripped out these holes there or there, you need to get a whole new housing. And in my case, I had to go buy a whole new axle because they didn't have the housings in stock. Hence why I have two of them. These right here are the two bushings that we're going to be recreating today. One steel one there for the bottom and a long brass one for the top. So we're going to make two sizes. The long one is there because of the aftermarket brake hardware. It came with the hardware kit. So that's why we need a long one and a short one. So we're going to make bigger bushings for M4 size screws. And in order to use the larger bushings that we're gonna make, we're gonna to have to overbore the knuckle holes and also tap out the C-hubs for M4 bolts. For those that are curious about the specs and designs, here you go. You can ignore these two drawings. These were gonna be some shoulder screws that I was gonna make, but then I kind of realized that because of how short the threaded section is gonna to have to be, ignore that number, because that's oversized, the die wasn't gonna get down close enough to the shoulder to have full thread engagement. So I kind of ditched this idea and I'm sticking with the bushings. The first thing I'm gonna go do is retap the axle housings and bore out the knuckles and brake hardware. Something I need to keep in mind when drilling out the axle housings and tapping them is that the C-hub holes are not perfectly perpendicular to the axle housing. You see what I mean? If I put a piece of welding wire in there, they're on an angle. So I need to make sure that I clamp my axle housing on an angle so that I can get a nice straight up and down hole or at least so that my head can be like, okay, this is straight up and down. We're gonna go straight up and down, even though this is crooked. So something to keep in mind if you guys are following along at home, but I need to remember this, so let's get right to it. Alrighty, both axle housings are drilled and tapped to the best of my ability. Now that the housings are drilled and tapped, I can move on to boring out the knuckles. Now I need to pay attention to that same off angle that we were talking about later because the knuckles have it also, as you can see. So I think what I'm gonna do is, because it looks flat to the steering arms, I think I can just put it in my vise carefully, flat with the steering arms, and go straight down. Let's see if that works. Yeah, looks like it. The bottom hole kind of guided it for me.
Okay, with that taken care of, I'm gonna head over to Rambi, start getting all set up. It's gonna take a while, so I'm gonna time lapse it, but I'll come back when I am ready to actually make some bushings. On the turret here, our first operation is to set the stock depth. Next then is to center drill it and then properly drill it all the way. And then the second to last step is cutting the shoulder with the hollow mill. The hollow mill, I've been having issues with it galling up on the cutting edges. So I have to spray WD-40 while I'm cutting because I don't have oil feed on this machine yet. I have some kind of ridiculous plans to get oil feed on this thing, but that's for a later date. And then finally, use the cutoff slide to chop it off. So fast forward a couple hours and a whole plethora of test runs. That is way too many. That was very frustrating. I finally have Rambi set up to repeatedly make the bushings that I need within the specs that I need. And I have produced two good ones just here. And I think I'm ready to actually do them out of brass. So with that, let's chuck some brass in there and get going. First things first, I'm gonna face this off real quick just so we have a nice clean starting face. <laughs> Release the collet closer, bring my stock up. Feels good and smooth. Little tension on the collet closer while I set it. Perfect. Time to center drill. Next, the drill. There's our first brass bushing. Let's check our dimensions here. Overall height is perfect. Our thickness there uh, is also perfect. And our shoulder diameter is Not bad, but on the big side. So I may have to size the holes in the knuckles up one drill, but we'll see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make seven more of these just because I have this set up right now. It is a 
pain in the butt to try and get all this stuff set up again. So I'm going to make some extras while I'm here and we should be good. After that, I'll move on to the long ones. All I'll have to change is the initial depth stop um, position and the rest of the tools will follow suit, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So uh, yeah, let's get started. It's pretty annoying that I've got to clean up those extra little bits of sore from the cutoff tool, but it's not too bad. I'll make a little jig that I can set these in and then I'll just file it off. I'll probably do it all at the same time with the longer ones, so I'm going to go ahead and set up for the longer bushings and then we'll make the brass ones. just finished the aluminum test run for the longer bushings and it turned out good everything is within spec or close enough to it all I had to do was adjust my depth stop and it turned out good have it eight well now seven <laughs> long bushings are complete I'm gonna go clean up all that extra swarf and they should be ready to install all right we are back inside now I've got my lovely bushings cleaned up I love them Hap I'm happy with them they're nice and shiny and pretty I've got my short screws and long screws cut to length I did have to grind the insides of the of some of the knuckles to get the bushings to sit flat because the flange on them is much bigger in diameter than the stock ones. And I also had to file down the axle housings just a tiny bit because I made these to such precise tolerances that they were actually a little bit too tight. Almost a press fit, which is great for most things, but for this, not so great because obviously we need our steering to be nice and free. So I'm going to get these partially assembled. I'm not going to put the axle shafts in or anything because there's still some shimming and such that I want to do. If you want to see that, catch me on stream one weekend and I'll definitely be working on that.
you go guys, bushings are set in there very nicely. Everything's turning pretty well. This side on this one's gonna need a little bit of break in time just, you know, for things to wear in, but honestly that's better than them being too loose. So that's great. Get the little brass bits in there, really, really happy with them. This one I just left without the knuckles on so you guys can kind of see a little bit better what we actually made. And I think that looks pretty cool. These are some hella beefy steering kingpins now and I'm hoping that they don't strip out again. And I'm gonna be careful with the Loctite, I'll tell you that much. And there you go guys, our knuckle bushings for these RC four wheel drive Yoda 2 axles are done. I'm really happy with them, they turned out good. I really enjoyed using Rambi, my turret lathe, to make them. Having the turret all set up with all the different tools and such was really cool, and being able to cycle through them and just whip these things out really fast like nobody's business. If I had to make 50 of them, I would not complain. I would be perfectly happy making 50 if I had to. So yeah, anyway, if you wanna see me fully assemble these axles, like I said, tune into my weekend live streams and I will be putting the axles fully back together as well as my Galanda too. So tune in for that if you like. And that's about it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please do leave a big fat thumbs up. If this does happen to be the first video that you have seen by me, make sure you go down, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below. If you want to see more videos just like this one, consider becoming a channel member, joining my Patreon, or heading over to Discord to join the conversation where I'm usually more active than on YouTube. So that's it for me, guys. Thanks again so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time.